<laughs> As I promised earlier, um, that we would we'd ask you about Manchester United. And there, there's two things I want to talk about. So first of all, uh, as I said earlier, David De Gea is coming to the end of his, his, um, his time, potentially at Manchester United. His contract is expiring. And it's relevant for you to talk about another goalkeeper and, and the legacy and the history that you have with that football club as well. So what do you think the thinking should be from Manchester United around De Gea? I think you've got an incredible goalkeeper, an, an incre not just an incredible goalkeeper, an incredible servant to the club. Uh, what is it, 11, 12 years he's been there. To, to, to be at any club for that long, I know, is, is a difficult thing. Uh, to, to be the number one at a football club the size of Manchester United is, is, is an incredible achievement um, and one that has to be really respected. And I think looking at his season, he's been asked to play a completely different way than he's ever had to play. But from what I'm seeing, I'm, I, you know, like I said before, you'll notice the things that go wrong, but there's a lot of things that are going right as well. And, and he's, he, I think he's playing a, a, a really, really high level with his feet as well. The, you know, the actual goalkeeping side of it has never been in question because he is he's outrageous how, how good he is at, at that. Um, so I think Manchester United are probably looking at it in, in terms of what would it cost to replace him? It would, it would cost you north of, of, of 60 million. And you already have a guy who's who's a, a top-class goalkeeper uh, and, and from the looks of it, wants to stay. So uh, I'm, I'm th I, think they'll, I think they'll reach some kind of agreement at some point. The other thing on Manchester United that we have to ask you about is, is this, this story of Ineos and Sir Jim Ratcliffe, who are, according to reports, leading the way now in the bidding to take over from the Glazer family as, as the majority shareholders of Manchester United. Ineos already own a couple of football clubs, including Nice, who Casper plays for. So, what would they be like, theoretically, hypothetically, um, as, as potential Manchester United owners? Well, I mean, I, one of the biggest reasons that I joined these was because of Ineos and because of Sir Jim Radcliffe and, and, and Sir Dave Brailsford and their vision and, and how they want to, how they want to, evolve their sports because they, they've been successful in, in every, not just business, but in, uh, in every other sporting venture that they've, that they've thrown their, their, you know, their investment at. And I think with Manchester United particular, Jim is a big Manchester United fan. I think that, that speaks a lot to, to Manchester United fans that there's someone, someone coming in that cares deeply about the club. Um, from, from my own experience at, at Nice, he's, he's a man that, that's present, that comes to games, a guy that's uh, you know, knowledgeable about football, but, but vast knowledge about performance in general. Um, he has great people like Dave Brailsford working for him, uh, who, yeah, who again are present. I think that's, that's the main thing of any club that I've ever played at. Look at Leicester's example, that the, the owners are present that it's not, there's not this divide between who, the people who own the club and the people who are there on a the daily basis. Um, so I think, uh, obviously, I'm biased in, in terms of hoping that Ineos are, are, the, uh, are the preferred bidders. But, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's wait and see.